We're talking steel cut oats. So good. So nutty. So simple to make. Water, a pinch of salt, and oats. Add apples baking in the oven. Delicious with apple pie spice, cinnamon, and even nutmeg. Add pecans, walnuts, almonds, butter. So good. Quick and easy, the oats are done. Add a touch of maple syrup and or honey. Those baked apples are so good. Not sure they'll make it into the cooked oats, but they do. Stir it all around. Serve yourself a bowl of steel cut oats. So much goodness inside and the best are the memories that come with it. The end result is always the same. Empty. Make enough to store and keep for yourself during the week. Hi everybody. Welcome to what I'm calling Noni's Nook because I'm a Noni grandma to my baby granddaughter and this is my bathroom and it's my nook area. It's where I film. But today I want to talk to you about breakfast. Okay, not a glamorous brunch or fancy schmancy breakfast, but a good hearty breakfast. One that I grew up with, one that I do have really now as an adult fond memories of, and one that I had to kind of acquire a taste for. So let's get right in. I'm talking about oats. When I was growing up and my mom decided to enter the working world, I was probably in about sixth or seventh grade and my older brother and younger brother were all a couple years apart. So that was kind of her uh, first venture after being a stay-at-home mom, going back to work. And my mom and dad at that time decided one would work day shift, one worked afternoon, so there was always somebody home smart on their part. So my dad was home in the early mornings because my mom had to go to work super early and he always fixed us a really hearty, hot cooked breakfast. He thought it was very important and he was absolutely right. Um, I grew up in the north and uh, kind of in the snow belt area, so those winters were cold, frigid, and downright treacherous sometimes. So. He always felt like our bellies being full with warm oatmeal or porridge or cream of wheat, whatever you want to call those particular oats, um, he felt that was important. And so I'd get up and go, ugh, oatmeal again, yuck. But they've learned to acquire uh, taste for oatmeal and now I love it but I do zhuzh it up and my favorite oatmeal to eat is steel cut oats. That's oats in their rawest form and I usually buy and unfortunately I don't have a can to show you but I usually buy steel cut oats in a can comes actually in a little steel can and those oats once they're cooked are so nutty and they have such a mild flavor so so good I am having some problems finding them in the area where I live and so I am using the Quaker steel cut oats and I like the actual long cooking steel cut oats, but I'm again having difficulty finding those. So I'm using the, I think it's the, not the instant, but cooks in three minutes um, type oats, but the best, the best oats are the steel cut. And this is the process of what I do. I like to prepare um, a good amount, a good portion so that whoever wants it during the week can just easily grab it from the container, put it in another little Tupperware, take it off to work, or it's already made, just put it in a bowl and nuke it. So 
The process is this, follow the instructions on whatever you have. If it's the steel cut in the can, follow those instructions. That takes about 30 minutes to completely cook. That's a long cooking process. Um, or the three minute process, depending on the size, like I made enough today for four servings, so I cooked it for like about five minutes. And um, you add the designated amount of water in the pan, bring it to a boil, I lightly salt it, and then I add the amount of oats. Cook it over um, a medium heat, you know, stir it frequently so it doesn't scorch your, in your pan, and then put it off to the side. That part of it is done. Simple, easy. Um, a little more time consuming, like I said, if you use the actual long cooking steel cut oats, but the flavor, you cannot compare the two because there is really intense flavor on those steel cut oats and they're chewy. They have a nice little bite to them. They're not quite as mushy as the uh, three minute oats. And I think a lot of times when people say, I don't like hot cereal, a lot of times I think it's because of the consistency. But anyways, um, I then, and sometimes I make the apples first and then I cook the oats, it doesn't matter. Once the oats are done, just put them off to the side. But um, I'll use about, uh, for four servings, I use between three and four large Honeycrisp apples. And I like the Honeycrisp brand because it's sweet and tart and it has a really nice um, crunch to it. And so it just those apples do really, really well baking them in the oven. Yike. Oh, I hope that didn't fall too much. Just noticing that. Oh, anyway, I'll have to check that. I do like um, to core the apple, leave the skin on, cut the apple into bite-sized portion size, get a cookie sheet, line it with foil, spread your apples all over the cookie sheet, um, sprinkle cinnamon to cover the apples, and I use what's called an apple pie spice. It's kind of a mixture of some cinnamon, some nutmeg, um, uh, and some apple kind of spice, but that's what I use. And I sprinkle that all over the apples, then I take about three to four tablespoons of unsalted butter. Yes, I used real unsalted butter and I cube them all over the apples and then I add some whole chopped pecans and today I added some sliced almonds. Spread it all over those apples, stick it in a 350 degree oven. I cook it for 20 minutes. I then take it out, stir it around so it's evenly coated. I put it back into the oven for five more minutes. So 25 minutes to get those apples from start to finish is pretty quick. And it just sends a nice um, sweet scent throughout your house that just permeates and smells so good. When the apples are done, I take them out of the oven and I dump them right into my cooked oats. Mix them all up and it's ready to go. Oh, let me just also say, when my oats are finished cooking and I take them off the burner, I add about one tablespoon of real maple syrup to the oats. Um, I do that because I want that little bit of mapley flavor in there just to kind of get into all of the oats. Now I don't do a lot, I mean, to taste. If that's what you like and your family likes, then add more. But I like everybody to just Take their serving in their bowl and add whatever they want. Honey, maple syrup, half and half, more butter, whatever. Um, so that's why I just use that one tablespoon just to kind of get it to get in there and mix all around and touch all those oats and those nuts. And then I put it into a container, let it cool, put the lid on, and there it goes in the refrigerator. And it's quick, it's easy, it's convenient. If someone doesn't have time to eat breakfast at home, they can put some in a Tupperware and take it off to work and just renuke it. Um, it's so hearty and it just 
feels good when you're eating it. It's um, warm and soothing and it's the flavors just intermix and it's so delicious. And I promise you, it is brain food. It is energizing. It is sustaining. And you really won't think about eating until, you know, depending on what time you eat, early afternoon or even a little after because it's just so sustaining and delicious. And what I like about it, especially now, is all of those things I mentioned, the deliciousness, the uh, satisfaction of having a good hot cooked breakfast and I even make this in the summer yeah even when it's hot out I've got the air conditioning on but because what I like about it is the memories the memories of my dad calling me down in the morning to get my breakfast and me saying Bleh! oatmeal again yuck why can't you make french toast or pancakes and him saying eat it it's good for you and sending me off to school in that cold weather, knowing I had a good hearty breakfast, I have some good brain food, and I'm not gonna be starving for lunch. He knew what he was doing. And that's why I like eating it now, because I think of him often when I'm eating those types of oats. And he also made cream of wheat. I love cream of wheat. I just love cream of wheat with butter on it, and just a little splash of half and half, or if I have real cream, just, just a tablespoon. It's so soothing, and I love it, but I don't really judge that up as much as I do the oats, because I think the combination of oats and um, nuts, and you know, and if you like craisins or raisins, grab a handful, stick it in your bowl, mix it up, so good. So when I want a bowl, for breakfast, I just go in the refrigerator, scoop some out of my container. It's all made. Um, like I said, I might dab a little bit of half and half, put it in the microwave, nuke it for a few seconds till it's nice and warm, sit down with a cup of coffee and a beautiful bowl of oats. And I promise you, you'll make it. You'll make it for your family, you'll make it for yourself, and you know, if you don't like oats, maybe it's a new way to try, to incorporate that into your own diet. Listen, that's really good for you. And you just gotta be careful about not judging it up too much so that it's like super fattening, but I think the way I make it, it's so good. And even for the amount of what they say is four servings, with all of that added in it, it's really more. I mean, usually I get six servings out of four because it is so filling. So, no need, no. I'm going to encourage you to make some good oats, make it for yourself, make it for your family, and enjoy. And for me, like I said, it just brings back good, warm memories. Until next time, from Noni's Nook, be kind, be humble, and age gracefully. Bye.